is why I love making PS3 tutorials. Let's do this. Hey guys, this is Versatile from Proud of Phoenix Media. In today's video tutorial, I want to go over the PS3 downgrade process, the tail end of it, for 2017. So basically what I did was I spent the last hour or so taking apart this PS3. It's a 25XX series, 320 gigabytes. Using my E3 flasher, I was able to take various dumps, verified dumps were good, and then flash the dump, and then, uh, sorry, patch the dump, and then flash it over to a PS3. So, this process here, I'm just going over the tail end of it, showing you how to install the CFW. So what you want to do is get a copy of the rebug firmware, 4.81.2 Rex, put it on a USB thumb drive, under the PS3 slash update slash, then put your PS3 update update.pup file into that folder. So all I want to get across to you guys is you do not need to downgrade to 3.55. You can basically be on 481, use the E3 flasher, patch over the flash, uh, the patch dump, and then you can install straight to rebug and that's a huge time saver. So let's do this. So what you want to do is once you got your PS3 all set up, ready to go, log in and you go to system update we'll see that we'll update via storage media and then it's scanning and it sees the rebug 4.81.2 so what you want to do is just follow the wizard it's pretty simple so accept start and just follow through and maybe what I'll do is at the end of this uh, installation process I'll just install I'll just show you what I like to do after I do a fresh install of a uh, the rebug firmware basically what I like to do is install the rebug toolbox go into the toolbox do some quick settings. Since I'm mainly a DEX user, I like to convert to DEX like right away so I don't forget it. And then from there, you just install whatever you want to install. You know, install all the homebrew apps that you like. So for example, that would be like your Multiman, your PSN patch, uh, PS Ninja, uh, RetroArch, if you're into that kind of thing, Movian, or whatever apps that you like to do, right? So I'm going to show you my thought process of what I do when I downgrade consoles. So uh, what I like to do, of course, is when I open up the unit, I like to clean them out, give it a thorough cleaning, and then uh, follow through with the rest of the E3 Flasher stuff. Um, always make sure you use good thermal paste, Arctic Silver 5, excellent. Put on your CPU and GPU before you put everything back together. And the reason why I have my PS3 not fully assembled is I just want to check that the Blu-ray drive is working later on. I'll put a disc in there. And make sure that the lens is working as I expect it to before I finish everything else. So this part takes a while. So um, we'll just wait and see. But uh, yeah, so in the meantime, if you guys check out the PS3 playlist on the YouTube channel, there's tons and tons and tons of different videos on the PS3. If you guys have any tutorial ideas or topics that you are confused about or whatever, Leave a comment here, send me a message, PM, YouTube, email, whatever, and I'll take a look at it and see uh, what we can do. There's a lot of, you know, even though the PS3 is, what, 10 plus years old, there's still a lot of life in it. I know as of today, at the time of this recording, the servers are still alive, so there's still a lot of Call of Duty players, uh, there's still a lot of Battlefield players, there's still a lot of GTA 5 gamers still online on this on this console. So yeah, even though there's Xbox One and there's PS4 and now the Nintendo Switch, it doesn't matter. You know, old game consoles don't die. So, but yeah, and you know, it, it, just because you have a jailbroken PS3 doesn't mean you gotta use it for playing games. I know guys who like to, uh, you know, put movies on there, make it your own little entertainment system. Uh, you can have it actually, you know, store your movies and music and pictures on the unit itself. If you have a uh, home network solution, you can have your PS3 access that network share and stream your media. So that's pretty cool. Um, if you want to spice things up, there's tons of different custom themes online. You can get, you can change your icons, you can change your boot menu, you can change the sounds. If you're into gaming, of course, you can store your games on the internal hard drive, external hard drive. You can do PS1, PS2 games you can install retro arch and then you can install like a whole bunch of different roms if you desire and play a lot of old school consoles nes sega super nintendo um dreamcast i believe i haven't tried it before 
Um, so yeah, there's a lot of different potential that you could do with a modded PS3. And if you're in the market looking for one, let me know. I might have a unit for sale every once in a while. Okay, so we see that the system update is done. Great. And then we're going to go back to the main XMB screen momentarily here. And I'll show you my process of what I like to do once I install a fresh um, CFW. So just to reiterate, we save a lot of time because we don't go to 3.55. We just go straight from the OFW, patch it with the E3 flasher, and then go straight to rebug. That's the beauty. Okay, so we're logged into the XMB. So some gamers may notice, maybe not. So you go to Package Manager. You go to Install Package Files, System Storage. This is where you have the Rebug Toolbox. So you don't have to go online and download it. Save yourself some time. So we go into the Rebug Toolbox. I like to press Square so I can organize my homebrew when I install more, more homebrew. Excuse me. So we go into the Rebug Toolbox, and we'll notice that everything is Cax and Cax, which you'll see in the first column here. So let me get there in a second. So Cax and Cax. All right. So what we're going to do is let's do this stuff. System mode, Rebug. X and B, re, uh, debug, that's fine. Debug menu type, do whatever you want. I like to go uh, Dex. This, um, you can leave it off or on. I like to turn things on. Cobra, turn it on. Webman, turn it on. So we're good there. And then we go here, toggle QA flag, turn that on. Since I'm here, let's go ahead and convert the system to Dex. So let's dump the EID root key. In terms of where you get all your homebrew programs, you can go to store.brewology.com. That's where you can get Multiman and a lot of the other package files. So you can put that on a USB thumb drive, the root of a FAT32 flash, um, FAT32 formatted flash drive. Put all your package files there, and you can install from the main screen here. So hopefully this cooperates. If it doesn't, we're just going to have to keep on going, guys. Um, so let's see what happens here. Okay, so rewrite target ID, yes. Swap level 2 kernel, finally, thankfully. Now we're DEX. So once we get back to the main XMB screen, I'm just going to install, I'm going to show you my list of homebrew programs I have on my thumb drive. I won't install all of them just for sake of time. And then, um, and then if you're using Webman Mod, what I like to do is go into Webman Mod and then change um, some settings in there. So let me show you what I do. Okay, so we go into um, package manager, install. Here's a list of like all different programs I have on my USB thumb drive. So for example, I'm gonna install like PS Ninja, for example. So I won't go through all of them, but that's what I do. So I just keep installing all my favorite programs. And then last I go to like Webman games, I go to Webman setup. Here I set up some stuff here. So here I like to do load last played game on startup, enable dynamic fan control. So I made like a good value is like 65C for example. So let's do that, 65. And then, you know, click on, um, go to the very bottom, click on save, you know. And then let's go back. And then if you have multi-man and you want to copy games over, uh, you can do that or just play games free from your external hard drive. So once I'm here, I might as well just install Multiman so I don't forget. So yeah, that's pretty much the jailbreaking process, the tail end of it. Um, I know there's some people that get confused, like, hey, I just used E3 Flasher, what do I do now? So hopefully this video will help out those users who are not comfortable with, um, you know, the last part of the steps here and just want to make sure that they're following everything okay. So that's today's video tutorial. If you guys have any nifty questions, leave a comment here on the YouTube page. I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Once again, thanks for watching. Take care. Bye.